Life is all about choices and I like to offer my students uh, choices so we've got the opportunity for you to go to college and get the certifications. Uh, there's no place in the world is doing that but because I've had such a long love for certifications and I also want to do college courses I'm, I uh, got the university to merge them together so you get both three college credits and certifications so in this case uh, you're going to be doing a uh, certification only but just so you know you have the opportunity to also take a college course. Uh, so the next slideshow will sh show you the four courses that we're doing now in the first what they call a concentration. In uh, probably January I think the uh, term begins uh, we will start January 2012 we'll add restaurant management for the uh, ESTER certified food service professional certification, beverage management for the certified and beverage management certification, customer service for certified and customer service, and uh, one that doesn't have a certification attached to it, introduction to the hospitality industry. So there'll be a total of eight courses ultimately and 24 college credits. In this concentration of courses, there's four courses and you'll be able to get four certifications out of that. One in food safety, one in HACCP, one in culinary nutrition, and one in culinary arts. So you'll get 12 college credits and four certifications. Those, particularly the HACCP one, and in the next concentration we're going to be doing a restaurant management one, those have gotten people jobs. Young people in the military got out, and guess who worked for them? The executive chef, because the chef didn't have those certifications. So they're extremely helpful. Getting promotions, pay raises, a uh, quick way to zoom up the career ladder is to get these certifications. So they really help a lot, and they help our customer because you're going to provide them better service, you're going to know more about nutrition, you're going to know more about culinary. So it's, it's really a, an awesome thing for everybody. It helps your workplace, and it helps your customers, and it helps you. Welcome to HACCP. I think this is a great program. It is um, much more helpful for you than food safety in terms of uh, getting a job, getting promotions. Tens of thousands of people get uh, serve safe for CPFM every year and um, uh, certainly in the low hundreds and a couple of hundred a year, maybe three, four hundred would be a lot in a year that uh, get HACCP. Um, I've done probably the most of anybody. Um, over the years. Uh, so it's starting to grow, but uh, it's still you're an early opter for getting certified as a professional, and you'll find that's a nice addition to your resume. So look forward to uh, teaching that to you and uh, to having you be a certified as a professional. And we do have those pins, and you'll get one when you pass. Certified has a professional is from the Global Food Service Institute at the State University of New York, SUNY, at Morrisville. Training is presented by MOA, that would be E.H. Manley and Associates. And uh, we work in cooperation with Pearson Learning Solutions, which is the world's largest developer of workforce development uh, products. And so we're very proud to have them as our partner. We've got all great partners and uh, well-known names. HACCP class includes an overview of HACCP, where it came from, where it is, where it's going, discussion of the hazards, biological, physical, and chemical, the five preliminary steps of hazards of uh, HACCP, the things you need to do to get ready to put your HACCP plan in place, the seven principles of HACCP, and then we'll work on a practice HACCP plan. go through some test taking tips. This is not a class where you sit, relax, listen, idly look at the screen and like a motivation seminar all of a sudden you got it. This one doesn't work that way. You really need to pay attention as we go through, think about it, do your readings of the book. There's two purposes for the class. One being to teach you how to apply HACCP principles in your operation, so the functional aspect and the second is to pass the test and I'm not embarrassed to say that my goal for this class and my teaching techniques leans towards number two 
uh, getting you to be able to pass the test. You got the rest of your life to be an awesome HACCP manager. You got this class to get you to be a certified HACCP uh, professional. Of course, if you pass the test but you didn't really learn anything, then that doesn't do you nor your employer any good. So we want a combination of the two, but my teaching techniques are to try to help you to uh, pass the test and uh, secondarily to um, apply HACCP principles. When you graduate from culinary school, you're not ready to do a huge banquet for 500 people, um, and nor are you ready to go get a job in HACCP here. You have to continue to work and study. need to actively participate. If you don't understand something, send me a note, give me a call. Make sure that you understand it as we're going along. You need to um, know the terminology. You need to understand the whole process in order to pass the test and to actually do the program when you uh, go back to work. So make sure you know what we're doing. You need to have studied the HACCP implementation manual. I made it skinny. Got the high points, got the stuff you need to know to pass the test and to set up a HACCP plan. Um, so, so just read up to page 37. If you didn't, read the relevant parts before you look at the slideshow for each topic. So as we come to each section, I would read the book before you take that section. I'd like to introduce you to my slide reminder buddy, Mr. Lampshade. When you see that, that's for me to know. I'm getting close to the bottom of the screen, so I can uh, be a little bit more smooth as we go through this. So that's Mr. Lampshade. This is a food safety course, so think food safety. When you get to any questions on the test, think what's the best food safety answer. So we drop a glass. In the comptroller's class, we're going to scream at you for dropping a glass and wasting the money. Does that have anything to do with food safety? No. So for our class, you're going to think, Food safety, what's the problem with dropping a glass? Well, some of the glass might have gotten into the food. It's not a four quarts in a gallon type program where you're given facts and you recite them back. That's what food safety is, right? What's the temperature for cooking chicken? 165. What's the temperature for microwave? 165. What's the danger zone? 41 to 135. We just recite back what we were taught. In the case of HACCP, it's a thinking person's test. You've got to use deductive reasoning to figure out what should you do in a given circumstance. So, for example, we're concerned about uh, lettuce. What might we find in lettuce as a physical hazard? And relative to delivery, it was delivered in a truck. What was the food stored on uh, in the truck? What's that made of? therefore what might wind up in the food. So the food comes to live in a truck. Let's say you're a, a major operation. Uh, what's it sitting on? Sitting on a pallet. What's the pallet made out of wood? That wood look like it was just came out of the factory. It looks just beautiful and perfect. No, it looks like crap. It's got chunks out of it. Where'd those chunks go? Well, they might have uh, broken off, bound, pushed against each other, and they flew up in the air. Where could they go? Well, what's the lettuce packed in? It's in a box. The box has a hole in the top, right, so the lettuce can sweat and breathe. So where might that chunk of wood have gone? Into that hole and into the lettuce. So when we get to the part of uh, discussing what hazards could there be in um, lettuce, a chunk of wood from the um, delivery vehicle would be one of the issues. So that's what we're uh, talking about when we say deductive reasoning. HACCP is all about setting up procedures for everything and following those procedures. So if your choices on the test are A, B, C, D, have an up-to-date phone list, contact the FDA, donate the food to charity, follow the procedures that have been established, your answer would be follow the procedures. Doesn't matter what the question is. You see, follow the procedures. That's what we want you to do. That's the important point. You're setting up procedures ahead of time, and you're just following those procedures. This course assumes you've already taken and remember basic food safety issues. You've had serve safe CPFM, um, so we're assuming you know that. So we're not going to teach you that. But just in case you've forgotten. 
let's get our brains into the material and go over some reminder slides for things that you might come into um, contact with on this test and for this certification. Salmonella, very commonly found in poultry. Egg products, 1 in 20,000 eggs is infected. Raw meat, salmonella is an infection, causes severe cramping, fever, and diarrhea. For the purpose of the uh, HACCP exam, mostly they're just going to be asking you or expecting you to know where do you find salmonella, which would be in poultry. Shigella. Foods associated with Shigella would include salads, raw produce, milk and dairy products. Contamination of foods with bacteria is most commonly because of unsanitary handling of food by the food handlers or contaminated water. Got a picture of a salad diner to remind you when you come up with a question that wants to know about Shigella. Think of salad. Shigella with an S. Salad with an S. Listeria is an infection, especially dangerous in pregnant women whose infants may be stillborn if infected. Listeria can grow in refrigerator temperatures. Sources for listeriosis are in inadequately pasteurized milk, deli meats, hot dogs, and other refrigerated ready-to-eat foods. Vibrio is an infection. causes diarrhea, vomiting, chills, fever. Usual source is raw shellfish or improperly cooked fish. E. coli is found in lettuce, bean sprouts, other vegetables, ice cubes. Most common source, however, is ground beef that has not been thoroughly cooked. You can also get it while swimming from contaminated water. Staphylococcus aureus. Staph is an intoxication commonly found on the skin, nose, and hands of 50% of all people. Therefore, if people touched food with their hands, such as making a sandwich or a salad, there might be staph on that product. It causes severe cramps, diarrhea, and vomiting. This is a good time to mention. Remember the difference between infection and intoxication. Infection is from eating the bug. Intoxication is from eating the bug's poop, or toxin, or chemical. Infection takes a while, like an infection on your arm, takes 24, 48, 72 hours to happen. Intoxication happens fast because it's ready to go. Clostridium botulinum, or botulism, is an intoxication. It's anaerobic, meaning it can live without oxygen, does not require oxygen commonly found in the soil, does very well in canned foods where the oxygen has been processed out, but the bacteria doesn't need oxygen, so it continues to grow. Don't open swollen cans, or if you do, don't taste the contents. Untreated botulism is the most deadly foodborne illness. Hepatitis A. Again, what you're going to be needing for testing purposes is to remember where you find these various bacteria, what products you find them in. So hepatitis A spread by infected food workers can be spread in the final stages of food preparation after cooking or in unheated foods such as salads or sandwiches. So what does that mean? After cooking means that the chef can do a perfect job back in the kitchen of uh, washing hands, clean, sanitize the cutting board and everything. But when you hand it to the uh, wait staff, and if they just cleared some uh, some plates maybe, you see that quite often where they'll clear plates and then they'll um, take those dirty plates, plop them in the, uh, in the dish room and uh, pick up clean plates. Well, they're now taking whatever was on the dirty plates from those customers and cross-contaminating. So if those people aren't doing the job properly, if those people didn't wash their hands after going to the bathroom, they can cause a problem all the way up to whoever handles the product before it goes to the customer. So, you will also find hepatitis in raw shellfish. Norovirus. 
We used to call it no walk virus, now we call it the norovirus. Usually the source is from contaminated poop from workers or raw sewage dumped overboard. We find it on green salads, raw shellfish like oysters and clams, ice, eggs, ready-to-eat foods, water.